Hey everyone. I am very excited this morning. We are going to show what the new 2R3E solution can do on my 2038R. 220R loader with a 270 backhoe. Now, um, I've done a little bit of digging, as you can see here, and the reason I've uh, started digging already is because I wanted to find ground that is a little tougher than some of the other ground around here. Um, really great soil on my parents' property for the most part, but it's not really that deep. And so, um, you know, once you get down to a foot, maybe 18 inches, in a lot of places, you go from really great topsoil to just hard pan rock where you can't really penetrate. So that would be fine, but I do have a scenario that I want to show that is running the tractor at a, a relatively low RPM, 1500 RPMs, because that would be wide open throttle uh, for a stock tractor. Right around 1500 RPMs is what the Hydro Plus solution gets into the six gallon per minute range, which I realize that's more than the 5.3, but it's in that range. And so, you know, I think there are going to be customers that have the backhoe or even the loader that say, I want to run it. I, I want, it gets to the flow that I want, but I don't want to run it at 2,700 RPMs. I want to run it at 1,500 or 2,000. So one of the things you're going to need to know is, do you lose any digging force? And so far, uh, the answer is no. I dug that up, no problem. Uh, but you'll get to see for yourself here shortly. I will uh, show it in action. So um, I've had a little bit of time on the front end loader uh, this morning in real uh, dirt. Uh, it, is, it is just the way it should be, is my opinion. Um, two functions at once, no problem at all, even at lower RPM, somewhere around you know, I'm running 1500 to 2000, and that's really where I want to be on this tractor. I never want for power on this particular tractor. It's really about speed. So if I'm moving up to wide open throttle, it's to get hydraulic speed or ground speed, one of the two. So you can see that we had a lot of rain here earlier in the week, so it's super wet. Uh, I am a little bit limited on what I can, uh, where I can dig because it is so wet, but this seems to be a fairly dry spot. So I'm going to get started here and show you what it can do. All right. <clears throat> so the setup here is 1500 RPMs. Uh, based on my flow meter, that's right around uh, wide open throttle. Now, when I did initial readings for this tractor at wide open throttle, 2700 RPMs, I think it was right at six. And I think 1500, I, I didn't go back and look, I should have looked, is six to six and a half. So um, I just want to show you, you know, in this scenario, that if you want to run it at this speed, and this feels about like, you know, a lot of people did before. It sounds different. And I don't know how well we're going to be able to hear the sound. But this is, you know, kind of what I would expect. Now, me personally, I probably wouldn't run it at, at 1500 RPMs doing the backhoe unless I am, uh, you know, digging something really intricate or I need to be very careful around something, but, you know, this has plenty of power. We're digging up rocks, big rocks down here. I don't know if we're, we may hit that hard pan I talked about uh, pretty quick, but I was hoping that it would dig a little bit deeper. I, I feel it down there. So that's 1500 RPMs, and as you can tell, and, and, and you all who are familiar with this backhoe, you know, your wide open throttle, you can start to get some decent uh, three fun two and three function at once. It starts to work. It, it's not fast, but it definitely, you can get it to work. And that's an important part for me of a backhoe is, you know, and if you don't have experience with the one series, the stock one series, I mean, you're like this, like this, 
like this. I mean, everything is almost single function because when you start to use multiple at once, it won't even hardly go that fast. We'll say this sounds funny because the, the tractor's not lugging, it just it's just purring right behind me. So, so that's 1500. Um, let me turn around here and jump it up to 2000. 2000 is going to get us, I think, around eight gallons per minute. And with just a little bit of time I've spent with this, um, this is where I would be doing backhoe work. This gives me the flow that I expect, the flow that I need. And it, it feels fast if I want to go fast. So right now, I'd say this is as fast as I can probably dig with it. At this speed, if I was in a hurry, a tornado was coming, but I really needed to finish the trench. This is how fast I would dig. I don't have a lot of experience on this particular backhoe. One thing that feels funny to me, and you guys that have it, let me know if you have the same thing. The way the subframe is made, uh, you know, pins on in the back, similar to the way the one series does. But the way the subframe is made, it bounces a little bit, and it it, it feels like it's clicky. It, may, it could be that I don't have it hooked on exactly right. I hope that's not the case. Or maybe I do hope it is the case. It means that, it's not the backhoe, it's me. As you can see, 2,000 RPM, the tractor's purring, and really, I don't have any situation where I'm like, you know, go faster or catch up with me. It is, it is going as fast as it needs to. Now, one of the things that I struggle with, especially with the smaller backhoes, is you know, say before I had Hydro's Plus, there's a rock there. If I can dig it out. So, before I had Hydro's Plus, if I were digging a hole like this and I needed to come all the way over here to the extent and I, did, and I was digging here, I would not bring the dirt back to here. It just, it, it was just too painful for me to do that. But now, with Hydro's Plus, at least with this backhoe, I mean, you can come all the way over here and you're not killing time, I don't feel like. I mean, you are killing time, don't get me wrong, but it's better than repositioning. So get the dirt, put it all the way over here. I mean, that is just something I wouldn't do. I just, I would reposition my tractor before I'd spend the time moving all the way over here. And I don't think that's a problem here. I think I've got plenty of speed. You know, and I don't know what the use case is for that. Yeah, usually for me, it was like digging out a tree or something. Um, of course, I'm trying to go fast here and I don't have a whole lot of experience. So let me, let me calm down here for just a second. And, uh, you know, you're, you're at 2000 RPMs, you're not in a hurry, right? So you don't have to throw everything to the full extent. You still have the, the fine, tune ability to grab your dirt, put it where exactly where you want it. And you really have full control, but if you decide you need the speed, you also have it. All right, so that, compared to that, uh, I don't know if it, that seems faster or not. But again, the beauty of it, variable control valves. This is really like, for those of you who run a Mini X that is bigger than probably need to get up to about a 75, you know, a 35, so a 7,000, 8,000 pound excavator. This, that's what this feels like. Now, funny enough, it actually, honestly, it actually feels a little faster than one of those. Um, what happened, a weird scenario, at least for me, on Mini-Xs, as you get into the larger ones, they start to feel like they're going slower. 
And they are to some extent, but because you have bigger buckets, buckets and longer arms, you can actually do a whole lot more work with them. So this one, you know, and this is at 2,000 RPMs, I would, I would put it up against um, any of the small excavators, uh, you know, with, without the obvious advantage of being able to spin around on my axis. I mean, that's the only thing with a backhoe that, that isn't as good as a mini excavator. Well, not the only thing, but one of the main things mini excavator will do is I can turn all the way around and put this dirt behind me versus having to put it over here to the side. But not everybody has the money to spend on a $60,000 excavator and a skid steer for another, you know, 50 or 60,000, depending on what you're gonna do. Um, so uh, versatility wise, this is a, a very good bang for your buck. Let me tell you, I could dig all day like this. It wears me down to wait on a piece of equipment. I, I don't know why, it's just how I'm wired. And, you know, this one can go faster, even at 2,000 RPMs, this one can go faster than I want to go. What you're seeing right now is how fast I want to go. I want to be smooth, I'm going to put the dirt over here, come back, on my way back, I'm deciding where I want to go. I can put the dirt exactly where I want to go. You know, if you get faster than that, I gotta think too hard. And I don't wanna to think too hard. Oops. And if anybody's out there looking saying he looks like he's not that great on the backhoe, you're you're not wrong. Uh, on this backhoe, I feel like I'm pretty good on the one series. Um, this one's not a lot different, but it is different. The good difference is it has a longer reach. Because to dig a hole this big with the one series, I would just about have to be uh, repositioning myself. Okay, so let me go ahead and go to wide open throttle and just show you <laughs> what you can get. Uh, I did this briefly earlier. So 2,700 RPMs. If I look jerky, it's probably because, again, I don't have a lot of uh, experience on this backhoe, but you will have to spend a little bit of time. If you're, if you're already accustomed to your backhoe, especially if you're using it every day, it'll take just a minute to get used to it, but uh, it's, it's not long. There. But even at this speed, I feel like I can be pretty smooth. The advantage of this, and I wouldn't run my tractor wide open like this, or th now that I have Hydro Plus at least, but the advantage of it is the, the side swing, watch this. I don't know what the normal cycle time is, but that's pretty fast. And, and, and maybe one other thing to say is like, you can go this fast while you're booming in and booming out. That's an important feature there, right? Let's see if I can do it, I gotta get my head right here. So if I move over and then I'm booming in, because if you, if you have a cycle speed like is this fast, right? That's fine, but if you if you have it this fast and then when you pull the boom in, it almost stops like that. Well, that is that's no good for you, right? You want a you want a fairly consistent speed, a good speed, and you want to be able to throw another couple functions with it so that you can get your work done. You can see this uh, over here where I'm digging. I found one of those rocks that I was telling you about. that one out. Definitely faster. But it sounds like 
that four dollar a gallon diesel is going out the pipe a lot faster too so all right let's see i'm gonna pull it back i pull it back to 2000. Whenever I, I, for some reason, if I'm out mowing, that doesn't seem to bother me as bad. If I'm sitting still, it just, this sounds like it's being hard on the tractor. I'm not saying it is. I don't really, I mean, it's made to do that. I'm sure if you give Gail Banks a chance at it, it'll do a lot more, but uh, I just like it a little less. You know, uh, construction equipment, uh, you know, if you go get a mini excavator, even one of the smaller ones, you know, they don't have tachometers. But if you look at the specs on a lot of them, they're going to be running 2,000, 2,200 RPMs, which is, you could do that all day long with, with this tractor and get every bit of work that you need done, done. So I found one of those. You can see here that that's like a little, even a little shallower than what's typical. But uh, it's typical for out here. Good dirt above it. Good black soil. But you're not going to get through it. can't find a fracture. One of the things I like now that I have Hydros Plus, even on my one series, if you're in a hole like this, like before, every time I got a bucket, I, I don't know why, maybe maybe I'll tell you this and you'll be like, that's weird. But I didn't want to spend time like in the hole doing fun dressing work. I would, I would end up doing it with a shovel just because it, it took too long. And so I feel like now, you know, I can get in a hole like this, and this is probably not one that you really have fine dressing, but if you do, those of you who dig trenches, you want to, you know, come out here, put your bucket down, and, and then clean it out. When you don't have any flow, that's kind of hard to do because you, you absolutely have to have two functions at once. You want to set your bucket flat and you got to pull it towards you. I don't know, get off that rock. You got to pull it towards you and then you got to give it some relief so that it stays flat and it doesn't just uh, curl up and miss the dirt that, that you're trying to trap. Well, that uh, is probably a fairly comprehensive view at the backhoe, I, but I, I probably would have already stopped. Maybe some of you are thinking, I wish I had already stopped, but uh, I need some dirt here so that I can show you the loader function. And what I'm gonna do, if I get this pile of dirt going, is, you know, try to simulate. I don't have any work real work that I know that needs to be done. So what I'm gonna to try to do is simulate some of the things that we typically do with these tractors. So I'll take this gnarly clay ridden dirt and I'm just gonna transport it and uh, you know, use the auto throttle. So you can see that in action and kind of how I would set it up myself. And uh, Kind of give you a sense of, of what your new capabilities will be if you get this solution for your 2R and 3E solution uh, tractor. Now, one thing I'll mention, I got to make this clear on my website. Uh, if you have a tractor that says 3E all the way back to 2008, this works. Now, I know some of you are going to be wondering if you've got the 3320 or the, you know, the equivalent. Uh, three tractor, which I think is probably those, when they're like that and if they're equivalent to a three, I think they're more 
equivalent to the 3R because the 3 the 3E three e has been out and around for around 15 years at this point. So, um, unfortunately, those use a different setup, and uh, this solution won't work on them. I am looking at potentially upgrading the 3R tractor uh, and, and, and providing a solution for it. And the reason being, that tractor's got good flow. It's got as much flow as this 2 Series does with a solution. The difference is, is that tractor has two inch cylinders on the loader. So you can actually, you know, if you were running the same flow rate on this tractor, which has one and a half uh, uh, inch bore, and the 3R tractor, which has a two inch bore, your loader performance would be different, at least at the same flow rate. And this, with the Hydros Plus solution to R3E, you basically have, you're pretty much in parity with the 3R tractors. The difference is you get a lot more performance simply because, uh, simply because you have smaller cylinders on everything, whether it's the backhoe or the loader, you're running smaller cylinders, you get faster speeds. Of course, you get less power because you have less, uh, when the cylinders are smaller, it's less power, but um, that's kind of the trade-off. Now that we're in parity with flow, with that tractor, it might make sense, it might make sense to make the cylinders bigger on certain portions of the backhoe and certain portions of the loader. So that's my, for those of you who've watched this long, that's my teaser for some other things that may be coming soon at Hydro Plus. But uh, for the moment, this solution is the most exciting thing. And if you've got a 2R or 3E series tractor, go to the website and check it out. Okay. I think I might have enough dirt to show what I want to show. So let me transition to that. <laughs>